having the opportunity to turn this dilapidated monster of whatever it is into some fabulous home which will be around forever it's just what an amazing opportunity how many people get to do this and what's the worst that can happen i go bankrupt or i jump off the top of it <laughs> this project is a mixture of loving conservation work and blistering new build but fundamentally the place has to be habitable so a lot of the internal brickwork put in to support the water tank will be stripped out to make some usable rooms on the first floor there'll be a gym and above that two bedrooms Above those, a double-height master bedroom with a connecting mezzanine will occupy two further floors. Up yet again, there's a study with a fourth bedroom above that. And finally, 100 feet up within the water tank itself, a rather spectacular living or prospect room. Large windows cut out of the existing cast iron tank will provide what they hope will be pretty magnificent views across London. I haven't been in the tank. Do you want to have a look? You've never been in the tank? No, because it's been full of pigeons and poo and all sorts of stuff. Oh, good God, it's vast. Are you up there yet? Yeah, I am. You know, it's huge. It sort of seems three or four times as big as the rooms downstairs. Use all this gubbins to hang on to to the right. Oh, my God. This will make the most fantastic room. Look at the roof. This is amazing. Four months into Lee and Graham's big project to transform a South London landmark into a luxury home, Lee is suffering his very own credit crunch. We're at the point now, with, with money, it's, it's, it's just become a nightmare because there's all the huge bills now coming in and I'm trying to get all, my, all the credit cards, the limit's increased, so we can finish the job. I mean, every project has that point mm. where you feel so stressed by the fact that you can see that, as a result, the zero point approaching very quickly. So it's a huge worry, and that's what mm. is getting me up at four o'clock in the morning now, and I was hoping we wouldn't get to this point. The front of the cube will be made entirely of 40 square metres of high-performance glass. It's going to be great to see these in, and this is what gives this building wow. There's not many houses around with French doors which are six metres tall and six metres across. <laughs> you don't buy these in a well-known hardware shop. Each pane weighs half a tonne. It's a delicate job manoeuvring them into position. OK. After two years of designing this, there's like a piece of glass, which is just incredible. They're potentially only weeks away from moving in. Glass. Hey, presto! <laughs> In eight extraordinary months, they have tamed the tower. <laughs> wow! <laughs> None of this really reveals itself until you come around the corner. It's all hidden behind the buildings. What a jaw-dropping showstopper of a building. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm admiring your building. Good morning. Now the scaffolding's done. What a difference, isn't it? Yes. It's looking so sharp. So clean, so bright. I mean, those little eyebrows up there Fabulous. are pert, aren't they? They're brand new eyebrows. They're yeah, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Re completely re restored. Repaired and reset, and all in eight months. Yeah, yeah we're living God. here. What's it like inside? Come and have a look. Yeah. Good Lord. <sighs> this is sharp intake of breath, crystalline, isn't it? Beautiful. Very, very perfect and lovely. Now, these windows are. Completely magnificent. Is it easy to open? Yeah, have a slide. It's, yeah. it's designed to be quite simple. Oh, it is. Mm. Gosh. Half in fact, I can do it on one <laughs> finger. How about that? It's kind of a thrill. It is. No, you're moving a ton of glass. And they go all the way. Oh, man. It does that amazing thing that sliding glass doors do, which is yes. suddenly you're not indoors anymore. Absolutely. And you can stand... In the rain. In the well, rain. in the dry, actually. It's just catching the very edge of the glass, but it's glorious. <laughs> So, uh, it's a facsimile, isn't it, of downstairs? This yes. Into, wow, it's even lighter, this room, because it's that bit higher. And from here, you can just see emerging from over the trees what is yet to appear mm. the further you go up the building. It's a bit of a tease. So onwards and upwards. What, oh, my goodness me, what a view. What a th thing. It's, it's hard to credit, believe, that this is that tank that we stood in. My good Lord. It's like being inside the goldfish bowl <laughs> underneath a zeppelin. <laughs> it's a sort of odd, weird sense. And it's this big picture window which gives you the view of the city, doesn't it, from the Shard right round through St Paul's, 
post office tower, the eye, parliament. That's, that's the whole of central London. It's not much more. In one view. Pretty, pretty gobsmacking, huh? And so to the east, there's no respite. Every turn gives you a separate vista. It's very unusual to be so high in such a small space that commands views from every direction. In London, I don't think there's any space that does this. No, no, am I fair in saying, really, this is what it's about? You know, if, if, if you spent your money on nothing but this, it, it's kind of worth it, isn't it? This is what it's about. This was what it was always about. The experience of building this, the pain, and the huge amount of debt that you've taken on, is all that worth it? Yes. But we've got what we wanted. Of course, we've got debt. You can afford to live here, Graham? Just about. I think the thing is that we have to afford to live here. I mean, look at this. <laughs>